And this is where it starts to unravel a little bit. There's gum wrappers all over the floor. And I was like, are those my underwear? Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arizona May, AKA Stephanie, and today we are going to be doing a story time video. So this story time is about my crazy roommate. Um, I had my first year of college. Um, I only actually had her for one semester, thank God. And um, I'm going to tell you the crazy stuff that she did. So let's get started. Um, if you see me looking down, it's because I have some notes of, because I don't want to leave any details out. Okay, so let's get started. So the first things first, it was my freshman year of college. It was my very first semester. And the way that housing works is that um, we were in an actual apartment complex. We were not in dorms, per se. So it was like an, uh, an apartment complex that was also renting out to the general public. So we lived with actual neighbors in an actual apartment. And it was a two bedroom apartment and there was two girls in one room and two girls in the other room. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to change her name. We're gonna change her name to, okay, we're gonna call her Jane. Okay, so me and Jane, we shared a room. So the way our room was set up is that we had one bed up against the wall, one bed kind of on the other side of the wall in the middle of the room, and then there was a long hallway that had our bathroom at the end because we had a bathroom attached to our bedroom. So first things first, we started talking online. We got, as soon as we got like our email list, I or the names of our roommates, we looked them up on Facebook and we just started talking through there. So, um, she seemed really nice, really cool, down to earth, but then again, I had never met her in person, so I wasn't sure how it was going to work. And also, I was new to the area. I didn't know anybody going into college. I didn't know anybody where I lived. I moved to a brand new place on my own, and that was that. So, when we moved in, we moved in at the end of August, early, or... Yeah, moved in at the end of August, early September of 2014. So that was three years ago. She just seemed very weird to me, but I just figured she's quiet. She was a sophomore when I was a freshman, okay? So she kind of just made it a point to tell me how things worked and showed me the ropes and everything, introduced me to a whole bunch of people, and she was very nice, very sweet, and like, she was a good friend, you know? Then, as we started living together, um, I noticed some things that kind of annoyed me. So, as a lot of people may know, I have OCD. I cannot stand it when my room, when my apartment is a mess. Now, don't get me wrong, when I was a kid, I was a pig. I, you couldn't even see the floor in my room. Um, that's how bad it got. And... Now it's like the complete opposite. I I feel so bad for my mother. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry for everything that I did when I was a teenager because I was a mess and I know that now. And I understand why you get so upset when there were dishes in your sink and when my room was a mess, that kind of thing. So let's get into the actual things that she did wrong. So... The first thing that I noticed when, sorry, I keep touching my hair. It's like bothering me. So me and her meet and, you know, we're getting along very well. She's an art major. I'm a business major. So we're both relatively quiet majors and we, you know, would just work on our stuff and that's it. Okay. Well, at the time when I was living with her, I worked at Bath and Body Works and I was doing inventory for them. And uh, I would get home around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning because I worked the night shift. Um, so one night I um, come home and, you know, there's some dishes on the sink and stuff. And it wasn't that bad. So I was like, whatever, like, I don't care, you know. 
Um, and then I go into my bedroom and we share a room, mind you. And I walk in and this is like three o'clock in the morning, mind you. I walk into the room and she is sitting. So her boyfriend is laying on the bed. She is sitting on top of him. Um, and she is doing his makeup while he's laying down. Okay, I have done my boyfriend's makeup before, and I, it wasn't something that was like, that made me mad. It was just kind of, it caught me off guard. So I was like, oh, okay, well, have fun, you know, um, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah. So she was like super understanding. She was like, okay, no problem. Like she packed up all of her stuff and they moved out into the living room. Perfect. Think things are all going well. Well, I was so wrong. So fast forward about two or three weeks into living with each other, which is not very long. Her mess progressively got worse. So when I would come home, not only would there be dishes everywhere, um, her parents delivered her groceries um, and keep that in mind because that is very important for later on in the story. So her parents delivered her groceries. You know, they would like load them on the dining room table and then they would leave and she would put stuff away. At least so that would be a normal thing somebody would do, right? Well, she would put the refrigerated stuff away, but the rest of the stuff would stay on the dining room table for weeks. Um, until one of us put it away or, um, it went bad. So we tossed it, you know, and, um, yeah, so it just got progressively worse. So one night I come home and this is where it starts to unravel a little bit, right? So I didn't have work that day. I came home from class. It was probably around three o'clock in the afternoon and, I walk in and my roommate, my other roommate, um, we will call her, we'll call her Sarah. So say I walk in and Sarah tells me, Hey, so I heard that you're dating so-and-so. Um, okay. I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. The guy that she was referring to had a crush on me and he asked me out, but I said no, because I wasn't interested. It's normal. And I told her, like, oh, no, like, I'm not dating him. I told him that I wasn't interested. So I don't know where you got that impression from. She was like, oh, Jane told me that you were dating him. I was like, oh, she must have misunderstood. I will talk to her. I'm not dating him. Well, I thought that was where it ended. No. So I told her, hey, Jane, um, I just wanted to let you know I am not dating so-and-so. Um, I don't know why you had the impression that I was, but I just wanted to let you know if somebody asks you just to tell them no. And she was like, oh, okay, I just was, I saw that you guys were hanging out and like, that's why I thought you guys were dating and you guys were together a lot, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I was just like, um, you probably only saw us together like once or twice because I wasn't with him all the time. We had a class together. So maybe that's why she thought that I was with him all the time. I don't know. But I just told her, like, I'm not dating him. And that should be in the end of it. She ended up telling half the school that I was dating him. And I was, like, to me, I don't care. People can think whatever they want. Rumors can be whatever they want. But, you know, I'm just making it clear to everybody I was not dating him. Right? Okay. So that happened. So it already kind of irked me that she was like spreading rumors that weren't true. So I was like, okay, whatever. It should stop after I tell her that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a thing and it will be done with. Okay. So now a couple days later, you know, I was having a bad day. You know, I was late to class. My car got hit. It was a bad day. Okay. And I had a bad day. I woke up that day, walked down to my car. Somebody had hit it. I was upset. 
um, went to school, was late to class because somebody hit my car. Um, and then I come home from class, immediately go back, uh, go to work. And I come back home at two o'clock in the morning. Okay, so I've had a long day. And I started class at 7.30 in the morning. So I had a long day. I was pissed off about my car and I was just tired and wanted to go to bed, right? Come home and I have to calm myself down because even though it's been three years, it still bugs me to this day. I walk in and there are dishes piled in the sink and along the kitchen counter. Okay, that's just the start of it. Her groceries that had been delivered a week prior to that were still sitting on the dining room table. All of her paint stuff was sitting all over the dining room table or her the living room table and all of her laundry was all over the couch. Oh, guys, I got so pissed when I saw that because I had just cleaned the apartment. So on top of having a bad day, I come home to that. So I'm already mad, right? I'm like, okay, Stephanie, calm down. It's okay. We'll figure it out in the morning. I'll tell her to clean it in the morning, whatever. I walk into my room. She's still awake. And this is where I lose it. I walk into my room and there is gum, there's gum wrappers all over the floor, all over the floor. And I was like, that's where I lost it. I was like, what is this? And she was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, obviously you did it because I wasn't home and nobody else goes in our room. So what the hell? you know, and she was like, it's okay, we can just vacuum them up. And then that's where I lost it even more. I was like, no, you're going to get down on your hands and knees and you're going to pick up all of these gum wrappers. And while you're at it, you're going to clean the rest of the apartment because I just cleaned it today and it's a mess. And by the time I come back, if all of your stuff is not put away, I am throwing it all off the balcony. I don't care. Now that might have been extreme, but like I said, I can't stand mess. So I leave, I come back maybe four hours, four and a half hours later. It's now six o'clock in the morning, by the way. I come home, the apartment's spotless. Perfect. I'm happy. I go to bed. I had a day off the next day, so I was fine. Then um, she had an issue with lying. Okay, so she would tell us stories and she would tell us different things that happened to her in her life and all this stuff. And, you know, we believed her and all this stuff. And she was basically manipulating us, thinking just to make us feel bad for her. So one day, me and my roommate, um, the same roommate, we were sitting not the, not Jane, but Sarah, me and Sarah were sitting on the couch and our other roommate, we'll just call her roommate three, was sitting in the living room with us. So, um, we're sitting there and Jane comes in and she's crying. And at that point, we already had figured out that she lied a lot so we were kind of just over it and so all of us just sat there we didn't say anything that might have been really mean but we didn't say anything we didn't do anything and you know it was that it was very awkward and but I wasn't going to I wasn't going to deal with it because I was sick and tired of being lied to all the time so fast forward from that time like two or three days after that. I'm getting, um, so where we lived at the time, it was 
when I went major grocery shopping, you know, that one time when you run out of everything and you have to repurchase a lot of stuff and it's a lot of bags. Well, me being by myself, it's hard to carry all of those bags up the stairs um, because it starts to hurt my back and um, it's just too much of a hassle for me to deal with it. So I get my groceries when it's a big load like that, I will get it delivered. And that way, like the heavy stuff, like a case of waters or something, like the delivery people can carry it inside for me. I know, first world problems. Okay, anyways, so we, I'm getting my groceries delivered. And as I'm getting them delivered, she walk, uh, Jane walks out of our room and she's crying, right? And I'm by myself and I'm just thinking in my head, God damn it. You know, like, why me? You know? So I was like, oh, what's wrong? And she was just like, my mom is in the hospital and she's having emergency surgery. I don't know if she's going to make it. They found something in her stomach that's killing her and like all this stuff. And, you know, I know what it's like to have a loved one in the hospital a lot. And I know what it's like to have somebody close pass away. So I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll be there for you. I'm like, I'm, they'll, she'll make it. Like, don't believe in her. Like, have hope. She will be just fine. You'll be fine. Um, and everything will work out. And then she like wipes her tears a little bit and she starts crying more and she's like and my boyfriend broke up with me so I'm like oh my god like why you guys were going so well what's happening and she was like he's having some personal issues and um you know he just needs time to reevaluate himself and I was like, you know what, he, if he really loves you, he'll come back around, you know, you're having a really tough time right now, just focus on yourself and, you know, get yourself to a better place. And she was like, okay. And so we had a long conversation and then the next day comes around and everybody has gone in the apartment. I'm home by myself. And all of a sudden I hear a knock on the front door. It's probably around 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, who is at our door this early in the morning? Well, it's not really that early, but who is at our door? Like what the heck? So I get up, I open the door and there's a lady standing there with grocery bags. And I was really confused and I was like, oh, um, can I help you? And she was like, oh, I'm Jane's mom. I'm here to deliver her groceries instant rage inside of me, right? Because she lied to me yet again about something that somebody should never lie about, especially to somebody that knows that person has gone through that. Like, what the hell? Like, why would you do something like that? So I was like, oh, okay, well, you can leave them on the dining room table and she'll be home later. And so she can put her groceries away. Her mom drops off her groceries, leaves. I'm pissed right? So Jean comes home and she sees the bags on the table. And I didn't even acknowledge her. I was so mad. And she was like, hey, um, so my groceries got delivered today? And I was like, yeah, they did. She was like, oh, did my dad drop them off? And I was like, no, your mom did. Um, thanks for lying to me. She was like, I didn't lie. And I was like, yes, you did. You cannot seriously expect me to believe that your mom just had surgery and she's up and walking around after she just had stomach surgery. That doesn't make any sense. So I was like, I don't want to hear it anymore. We're no longer friends. We're not talking. It's over with, you know? And so she was like, fine, whatever. And gets like all pissy, right? Okay, so now fast forward to the end of the semester. It's probably about two weeks left in the semester. Everyone's stressed out. Finals are coming up and, you know, we're all dealing with that. So she comes home one day and she comes up to me and she was like, Hey, Stephanie, are you going to wash the dishes that are in the sink? Because I'm moving out and I need them back. Okay, first off, I didn't even make the dishes that were in the sink. She did. Two, they were also her dishes. 
But as soon as I heard she was moving out, I was like, okay, fine, I'll wash them. I'll help you pack. Please, just get away from me. So, as she's moving, you know, every, boxes are everywhere and all that stuff. I understand it's a messy process, whatever. What I saw next, I will never forget. So, I walk into our bedroom. I think I was grabbing, like, tape or something. And I notice that there is, her hamper is in the, in the closet. I almost broke my neck on it when I was going in there. And I notice um, a pair of underwear that look the same as mine. And I was like, are those my underwear? Like, what the heck? And they're expensive underwear. I buy um, majority of my underwear from Victoria's Secret. So I, it's expensive, you know? So I was like, is that my underwear? Like, what the heck? And I don't touch them, first of all. I grab a coat hanger off of the closet, the pole that holds my clothes, and I lift up the underwear with it. And not only are they my underwear, she had her period in my underwear. I was so grossed out. I dropped them and left the apartment because I was like, I can't do this. When I came back, she was gone. She had moved out and she, it was over with. During also that time, um, I walked into her dyeing her boyfriend's armpit hair pink. That was really weird. Um, caught me off guard once again. Um, and when she moved out, she stole over half my coat hangers. Okay, so right before she moved out, she comes home one day and she's just, oh, okay, so I was in at home. This is coming up to finals week. This is the week before finals. And my roommate, Sarah, comes into the room and she was like, hey, Steph, is the internet working for you? And I was like, oh, I don't know, let me check. So I log into my computer and lo and behold, the internet was not working for me either. I was like, that's weird. Um, okay, let me check the router. She was like, okay, like I'll check it, I'm closer. I'm like, okay. She walks over to the router and she's like, uh, hey, Steph. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, the router's gone. I'm sorry, what? The router's what? She's like, the router's gone. Jane was in charge of the internet and she took it upon herself to cancel our internet before telling any of us the week before finals. Okay. So I knew she was canceling the internet at some point. It was under her name. I understood that. But at least give us a heads up first, especially when it's the week before finals. So all of us are mad because we're like, shit, how are we going to do our finals now? And so she comes home and I was like, hey, um, I saw that you took away the internet. Like, why didn't you tell us that you were going to cancel it? And she was like, I didn't think I have to because it's under my name and it's my account. It's my internet. Um, but there is a cancellation fee of $150. And so we're going to have to pay for that. I was like, um, no. We're going to pay for the internet. Okay, so we pay, when we pay the internet, we're paying for the whole month, right? So she disconnected the internet January 8th. I remember because it was only eight days into the month and we had no more internet. So I was like, we're gonna pay you for the days that we use the internet. So that's the first through the eighth and that's it. 
that brings it about to four dollars each person and she was like what are you expecting me to pay the rest by myself I'm like yeah because you're the one who canceled the internet and you're the one who canceled it at the beginning of the month if you wanted to just finish out the month and the cancel it or have it be canceled before January you should have canceled it sooner that's not my problem you know and I really wanted to say to her the coat hangers you took with you that were mine make that the payment okay and the pair of underwear and however many more you used yeah I ended up throwing away all of my underwear that I she could have possibly used and bought new ones because I was like, I'm not taking a chance with that. Um, so then she moves out and I don't hear from her since. Thank God. Um, so yeah, that is my crazy roommate experience. Um, she was interesting that one. And I have a lot more different roommate stories that I can tell you guys about. If you want to hear more, leave uh, like this video and leave me a comment down below if you want to hear another story time or have a suggestion. And if you want more of these videos, please give this video a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave me a comment down below telling me your favorite part of the story or your crazy roommate experience if you've ever had a roommate. And... Let me know what you guys think. Okay, love ya. I hope you guys have a great, wonderful, amazing day, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!